The future of reading is here, and it's more immersive than ever. Imagine comfortably sitting back with all distractions at bay, completely engrossed in your favorite novel, completely hands-free. I'm here at Souls HQ in San Francisco to show you the new Soul Reader, a new device that will revolutionize your reading experience. Ben, thanks for joining us today. Thanks, Gary. Excited to have you here at the office. Tell me about Soul Reader. Soul Reader is the world's first wearable e-reader. It's a fully immersive reading experience and it's comfortable, distraction-free. You can lie in bed without having to hold a book and just enjoy what you're reading. Why did you start working on this? Yeah, so the idea, I would love to claim that the idea was mine, but it wasn't. It was a friend of mine, uh, Trey Stevens, one of the partners at Founders Fund. He said, Ben, I really want this wearable e-reader. And, and I was like, I don't know, that, that's interesting. I, I, I couldn't quite really understand it at first. But then when I started prototyping and I built one out of toilet paper rolls and duct tape and, and low resolution displays, and the first time I laid in bed and I read, even for five minutes, I was like, oh, there's something here about being comfortable, about being fully immersed in the text, and I loved it. And so I just started, or continued to pull on the thread, building prototype after prototype after prototype. So one of the big things that I think we've talked about a lot is we're sort of in this world that's incredibly full of distractions. Mm -hmm. And this experience is kind of the exact opposite of that. Right. We, we talk about a fully immersive reading experience. There are these two key pillars. It's gotta be comfortable. If you're not comfortable when you're doing something, you can't be immersed in it. And then the other pillar is it's gotta be distraction free. And I notice even if I'm, if I'm reading a physical book or I'm reading on an e-reader, a typical e-reader, there's this tug, there's this pull. If I hit a lull in the, the text or whatever to pull out my phone or to go check my email or, or you know, you just, you get distracted because we're so wired because of the modern day devices to think about something else in that moment. Seems like that really unlocks something that a lot of people, you know, say they want. Being able to go very deep into, a, you know, a particular book or a particular topic without just like inundate, being inundated by all these notifications and things like that. One of the best examples is one of our early users, um, he, when he put it on for the first time, and a, a fairly avid reader already, but he reported back the, the, the very next day, I spent two and a half hours reading. I did not realize how even this, the minor discomfort of holding the book or being distracted by my phone was cutting short my natural desire to read. And, and I think it's those kinds of stories that we're seeing more and more where you just read more if you have these kinds of uh, devices that allow you to eliminate you know, the noise in your life. What about places? I mean, being able to do it yeah, you know, basically in almost any conditions, on a plane, next to a pool, on the beach, like all of these things you don't have to worry about, you know, do I have too much light? Do I have not enough light? What's going on? Yeah, in some sense, you know, we've controlled the entire experience. So we, the displays are right there with your eyes. The lighting is perfect to your ambient lighting, you know, all, all of those things. I think probably one of the first pictures you saw of me using a prototype was Ben's new airplane mode as I was sitting there with the Soul Reader on and my, you know, uh, noise canceling headphones uh, reading on the plane. And, and I think one of the other nice things about, you know, the way we've implemented this is it's, it's not just a, Come fully enclosed experience. It, it, it provides your peripheral vision. You're, you're aware of your surroundings, whether you're on the couch and your kids are running around or whether you're on an airplane and need to order some food or a drink or whatnot. And so, yeah, on the beach, on the couch, on an airplane, it's, um, it's just a great way to be reading. One of the interesting things about computing devices more broadly is that um, you know, especially ones that are mobile like this, they tend to happen at a particular moment in time. Mm. Um, and that's probably one of the things that you considered as you worked on this right at this moment. You know, what, why now? Like what's happening yeah, in technology? Yeah, yeah. So I think there's a, there's a market answer to that and then there's a tech answer to that. And the market answer to that is if you ask people, you know, almost everyone would say, I wish I read more. And, and not, I don't mean reading tweets or you know, posts on social media. I mean, reading books and really edifying long form articles. People, people want to read more. And so I think that's the market reason why a, a, a re-spin on the e-reader was absolutely necessary because by and large, they haven't done much since you know, the early days of e-readers. That's the market reason. The tech reason is also interesting in that in the, in the world of augmented reality, virtual reality, mixed reality, like all these other realities, People are much more focused on the, um, these 
the alternate realities that we could live on instead of what we like to talk about is well, what about actual reality? What about making face tech? We like to call it face tech. Things that you, you know, making face tech that is going to make our lives here and now better. And then the the other technical component to that is because you know the alternate realities or mixed reality, or virtual reality was the goal. We could also feel that that was kind of the wrong goalpost because the technical details to get all of that right and having a really satisfying form factor, lightweight, super long battery life. It's just, we're not there yet. The physics aren't there. The computational power isn't there. Optically, we don't know exactly how to do that. And so what the Soul Reader does is it kind of, it scopes that down into this single use case and says, well, if we just focus on reading, what can we do from a form factor standpoint? And it turns out that's how you get a lightweight device with a really, really long battery life that's comfortable and, and does all the things that we want it to do in the face tech world. You spent years on a very successful enterprise software startup, mm -hmm. uh, and you're back. You're, mm -hmm. you know, sort of next act is actually this uh, amazing piece of consumer hardware. Yeah. What was that process like? How did you, you know, decide yeah. to work on it, and how how is that looking so far? The first thing is I've been thinking about this distraction problem and devices thing for a long time. Uh, I think it was probably the, you know, even in high school, when I first got email, I recognized my own tendencies to want to check email and then want the next, you know, drip from friends on, you know, notes files and that we had that was kind of like early predecessor to social media. So in my brain for a very long time has been this relationship with devices, relationship with the internet kind of narrative, if you will. That's what what we really, when I started building Soul Reader and, and heard Trey's idea for it, um, that was the aha moment, the light bulb that said, ah, this, this is the kind of device that I want because it's part of the antidote to where we've found ourselves digitally. So yeah, it's a hard right turn from enterprise SaaS to consumer hardware. But because I feel like there's such a need in the market for us to take the next big leap in personal computing that I wanted to dive in. And then the other aspect is, I just, I love learning stuff. You know, spending time as an entrepreneur, spending time as an investor previously. You know, one of the joys of being here in the Valley is you're, you're just immersed with so many brilliant people with so many amazing ideas. And so to, to have an idea that I thought was culturally relevant and market relevant, but also allowed me the chance to just develop a whole new set of learnings about, you know, how do you build a hardware product? How do you think about manufacturing? How do you think about the trade-offs between software and hardware in every single decision? It's just a tremendously fun space to explore uh, mentally. And so that's kind of what drew me to it. So I have a soul reader. I open it up. What can I expect to get out of that experience? Yeah. I have three main goals for people who engage with the Soul Reader. And the first has to do with before they pick it up the first time. And it's this feeling of anticipation. Much like when you're looking forward to getting back into a good book, or, or even if you know there's a movie you really want to go see, there, there's a sense of anticipation that builds up such that you, you know, you, you're looking forward to engaging. So that's that, that from the very minute, you know, you open the box and you start to, you see this new product, like this is a new category. This is a new thing. I want to put this on. I want to try it. And then it, once you do that, once you put it on, the feeling I want people to have is to just feel lost, lost in the thing that they are reading. Um, because again, to the distraction point, we're, we're not used to that feeling anymore. We're used to our brains being tugged in a million different directions. And so the, if, if people are feeling lost while reading a book with the Soul Reader, that's a win. And then the last thing is after you put the Soul Reader down, what do you feel then? And the goal for us is I want you to feel refreshed. I want you to feel like the opposite of when you binge watch too much on Netflix and you, you know, stayed up till 2 a.m. and you regret it. I want you to put down the Soul Reader and feel like, oh, I'm, I'm edified. I had done something worthy with my time for the last 15 minutes, 30 minutes, hour, two hours, whatever it is. And so that to me is the full experience from before to after. So the cool thing about that vision at like the you know, single person trying it level is uh, how cool would that be if we had a billion people with that experience? Like what would that you know, sort of do to human consciousness and creativity and our ability to focus? Yeah, I mean, that's the, the bigger narrative here is Steve Jobs in the early 80s very famously said, the personal computer is a bicycle for the mind, right? But we've strayed away from that vision. In fact, the reports were after he passed away, he reportedly said, I don't allow the iPad in our home because I'm worried about what it's going to do to our kids. 
that's a really big gap from the original vision of what personal computing can do for us to what's being delivered today. So to me, yeah, once, once people start to unlock um, a more focused state of mind, first with reading, and then we'll obviously explore other ways to unlock that really deep focused state, I think the potential for humanity is enormous. And you know, we can start to tap back into the things that are probably unrealized today because we're busy doom scrolling and binge watching. Okay, well, I'm ready to sign up. Where yeah. can I get my Soul Reader? How do I get on the list? Yeah, that's great. If you want to read more and spend less time on your phone, go to soulreader.com. We're taking wait lists right now, name and phone number, and then we will be starting to convert those wait lists into sales and production this fall. Coming to your eyes real soon. Coming to your eyes and your happen. face real soon. That's right.